Uh, I'd like to walk you through a couple things. Um, we'll start with just an overview of the battery itself, uh, working from our, mm -hmm. our still photo here. Then we have a uh, three minute and 40 second video that goes, it's animation actually, it goes very quickly, but it will show you uh, the battery basically in context to the rest of the vehicle in terms of its operating modes. I'll try to keep up with it as best I can, explain how that works. Uh, then we'll come back to this, uh, answer any remaining questions you might have, okay? Um, try my, here we go. So this is the uh, battery system in a, in a reveal look. Uh, some of you may have had the opportunity to be down at the battery lab, uh, which is actually right next door to this building, or uh, we've had two events down at the battery assembly plant, the last one in July. We actually showed the inside of the battery. Um, lithium ion technology, as everyone knows, uh, the cell, uh, again, supplied by LG Chem out of Korea. It's referred to as a lithium ion polymer cell, polymer referring to the packaging. Uh, that's a soft pouch cell, that's not a hard can. It's basically a mylar aluminum foil. Uh, the pack itself weighs about 435 pounds or 195 kilograms, about five and a half feet long. It's packaged through the tunnel of the vehicle. This is actually, this uh, main service disconnect is in the console. So as you're driving the car, it's basically under your elbow. And the back extends under the front edge of the back seat. Uh, the fuel tank is just behind uh, the battery. Uh, 16 kilowatt hours of total energy. You've probably seen that number before. We've, that hasn't changed any time through the uh, program. Um, we had started with an 8 kilowatt hour of total usable goal, but we are presently uh, just uh, north of 10 kilowatt hour usable, which is about 65% of the total SOC range or state of charge window of the battery. Um, Interface to the vehicle, you'll see in the video, uh, high voltage interface, charger, and APM. We'll explain this in the video. Uh, coolant in and out, the battery is fully thermally conditioned. Uh, each cell is actively cooled and heated, depending on conditions. Uh, we do this both during driving and while charging, and even under extreme conditions, even if the car is uh, standing on its own, if, if, if necessary. Uh, the video will show uh, how that works, how our uh, cooling system works, also our control electronics, you can see here, uh, we have a distributed system, uh, four controllers on each uh, section, actually one on each section, two on the rear section. Perspective is a little deceiving. The rear section is actually larger than the front section. Um, all told, 288 cells, uh, 360 volt nominal voltage. Peak power is 110 uh, kilowatts. Uh, that's important, uh, the battery, uh, because if we are a pure EV, we have to be able to deliver full performance solely based on the battery at all times. Uh, the battery actually can produce more than 110 kilowatts under many conditions, but its rated power is 110 kilowatts, uh, which you've experienced in the vehicle uh, since you drove yesterday. Actually, based on the drive you had yesterday, you probably weren't pushing the car very hard since you were trying to achieve range. Today, I think you'll have more time in the car and you'll probably get to experience that a little more. So, um, I'd like to go into the video here, if we can. And again, I will do my best to keep up. It's a little bit of a race. Um, I'll show you in context, it's, a, it's an animation. So here's obviously the outline of the vehicle, showing the location of the battery in vehicle. The battery does form part of the body structure, the lower tray. High voltage connected connection to the uh, drive electronics, a power inverter. Uh, this is the device that converts DC to three phase AC to power the motors. APM takes high voltage DC, converts it to 12 volt DC to run the normal vehicle systems. Charge module converts uh, AC line, which comes into the charge port, so high voltage AC, either 120 or 240 volts, to high voltage DC for charging the battery uh, dur during all of our charge conditions. That charger is uh, a global charger. It can work uh, any, any voltage, any frequency around the world. We're gonna dive into the battery now. Uh, we're gonna remove the protective cover, just so you can see. Uh, this is actually current flow, the busing system inside the battery. Just give you an idea on how we link the modules together to form our uh, 288 cells. Here's a expansion of the cells. Each cell is paired with a single cooling fin. Quick animation of how a lithium ion cell works. Uh, during charging, <coughs> ion flow is from the cathode to the, to the uh, anode. The uh, lithium ions actually transfer from cathode to anode and remate with their ion 
uh, the electron, I'm sorry, electron that has passed through the motor, vice versa as we discharge, actually that was generator, this is on the motor, it basically reverses the process. So lithium ions migrate from one electrode to the other, the resulting electrons drive uh, the uh, motors and or charge. Cooling fin, uh, liquid flow, it's a glycol water mixture, we both heat and cool. Uh, it flows to the face, it's a one millimeter thick fin. There is one fin for every other cell, so every cell is actually actively cooled on one of its faces. Uh, that gives us 144 fins. Uh, we have a complete parallel flow. Uh, so basically, it's a very high performance a cooling system. Two degree Kelvin, delta T across any cell, maximum, and two degree uh, Kelvin, delta T across the entire pack. Very homogeneous. It's really key to long battery life. <clears throat> The electronics primarily are there for sensing voltage, current, and temperature, but they also have another important function, and that's cell balancing. Uh, to get optimal performance out of the battery at all times, we have to make sure every cell is at the same SOC, and those devices perform that function. Again, the enclosure is insulated, uh, and also uh, it keeps out dust and water. So during the charging process, we charge uh, from the wall, again, 120 or 240 volts, charges the battery to full, I'm going to start driving here in a second. So now we're in uh, our EV mode. Battery's providing all traction, uh, traction power to the uh, inverter, which is driving the motor. And at the same time, we provide 12 volts to the rest of the vehicle systems off the battery directly through this converter. Regenerative braking, we recharge the battery back through the power inverter electronics. Again, back to DC to charge the battery. When the battery is down to our minimum SOC where we've maintained our buffer, we go to an extended range mode, the engine is started, it's now driving the generator, the generator powers the electronics, and the battery basically acts as a large buffer during that driving. So during driving dynamics, when you, when you tip in, uh, the engine is not capable of producing 110 kilowatts, so the battery provides that difference. And then when you come to basically a cruise, and the engine's able to make that up with the generator. Some goes to the wheels, the remainder goes back to the battery. The battery basically floats in a small SOC range down at the lower end of its total range as you drive during extended range, always providing that peak power during acceleration cases um, and uh, any other performance maneuvers you have to have. So the, really the generator, motor generator, and the battery are working together uh, very closely during that time. Uh, it's really one of our uh, key enablers. It's a very unique feature uh, that uh, there's no other EV can really uh, really provide. Um, going back just really briefly, I want to hit a couple real important points. Uh, battery life at the end of the day is kind of the $64,000 question in the world of EVs. How long do they last? Um, I think as everybody knows, we've announced we have an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty. We've actually designed the battery system to 150,000 miles in 10 years. That's our design goal. That's where we designed it to. Uh, we're confident in that. We have uh, many, many months of cycling on cells. If you've been to our battery lab, you see where we do this, uh, both at a cell level, uh, what we call module level, as well as a battery level. Uh, the keys to life are a really a, a highly optimized chemistry from LG. We work hand in hand with them for uh, three years to make that chemistry uh, as best as it can be for this application. It is significantly different than what you have in your laptops. This is completely crafted to this application, an extended range EV. Uh, and on top of that, we have a, uh, a, a really superior control system that manages it electrically and electronically, and then our thermal system to provide basically that room temperature that every lithium ion cell would really love to live at. Uh, it's where they produce the best. They produce the best power and live the longest. So uh, this thermal system can both heat and cool. It's chilled, we can exchange the air. If it's mild ambience, as well as actively heated with an 1800 watt uh, high heater. And uh, take the question just one second. Sure. And uh, we believe we've got, the, we've got the best package out there. <clears throat>